Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We're on example five on page 15. Um, it's, it asks us how many terms are in the sequence 4, 20, 100, dot, 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 7,812,500. All right, so we've got a big one here. So what we're going to do is, um, like I said, I like writing down all my information that I have um, at the very beginning. I think that's important. So it's T1 equals 4, uh, the general term, Tn Oh, hit the magnifier there. Oh, my apologies. Is equal to seven million eight hundred twelve thousand five hundred, and our our value you can see is clearly five. Four times five is twenty. Twenty times five is one hundred. So our common ratio R is equal to five. All right. Let's go get our formula. We can clearly see that it's a geometric uh, sequence as well. It's increasing by a uh, common ratio of 5, so we're multiplying by 5 each time. And I steal my formula, fill in what we know. So we know that we have um, seven million eight hundred twelve thousand five hundred. And our first term is 4. And we get it. Oh, and there we go. We don't know how many terms there. That's what we're trying to find at the end here. So we're trying to find an exponent. We've never done this before. We actually do this in grade 12. Right now we're going to do um, something we learned in Math 10. You may rem remember using prime factorization. Um, so prime factorization is going to be a, a method we're going to use here. And then in grade 12, um, when we do, in grade 12, when we do the, um, the logarithmic section and the exponential functions, um, chapter 7 and 8 in uh, pre-cal 12, uh, we'll be able to do this. But uh, for now, um, we would solve this. Uh, so we divide both sides by 4. So I'm going to rewrite this line here, um, divide both sides by 4. That'll simplify this a bit and gives us 1,953,125. And that's because we divide it by 4. So 4 divided by 4 is obviously 1. So that's not. So we have no way of solving this the way we did. But notice that it's divisible by 5. The last number is a 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep dividing it by 5. But I, the, a quicker way is um, what we do is we use prime factorization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and see if this is a prime factor for us and see if it works. So literally I'm just going into uh, Google for a minute. I'm going to literally look up prime factorization calculator. Or I put three in there, but a prime factorization calculator. Right here, and we'll put the number in one nine five three one two five. Uh, we calculate, and you'll notice that the prime factorization is five times five is nine times. So an exponential form is five to the power of the nine. So we do this, so we can change this number here. It's equal to five multiplied by five itself nine times. So I can substitute this. In. And again, we're going to do more of this in grade 12. Just wanted to share this with you. So this becomes 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 and so on, right? 2, 3, 3. We do this 9 times. All right, so we have 5 multiplied by 5 because this is equivalent. So 1,953,125 is equal to 5 multiplied by 5. So 5 multiplied by itself 9 times. So this expression can be written as an exponent. This can be written as 5 to the power of 9. Because there's 9 fives. So 5 to the power of 9. So once our bases are the same, we can say the exponents are equal. Obviously. So now, on our next line, we just drop the literally drop the bases of five, nine, 
equal to n minus 1. Oh, lower n. So therefore, obviously our last step would be Sometimes the formatting gets a little tricky there. There we go. And we get add the one to both sides. So adding one gives that to zero, and nine plus one is ten. So n is equal to ten. So how many terms in the sequence? It'd be ten terms. So this here, last term of seven million eight hundred twelve thousand five hundred, is the tenth term in the sequence. Let's go to example six. Bring that back down where the page is supposed to be at. All right. Example six. Let's take a look. Um, so in example six, we have third term is equal to 81. We have the eighth term is equal to 1 over 79. So we clearly see that, obviously, to get from a third term to the eighth term, we're going to be multiplying by a fraction, right? You know what I mean? If the ratio is going to be a fraction, not a whole number this time. All right, so a couple ways you can approach this question. Um, I think I'll, what I'll do is uh, uh, I'll set up a system again. Um, because we have two different general terms. We have the third term and the eighth term. And we're looking for the general term, Tn. So basically, look for that formula. So in order to get that, we need the first term and we need the ratio. And we have neither at this point. However, if we use the formula for a geometric series or sequence, sorry, geometric sequence, which we know we have, it tells us in this geometric sequence, then we can fill it in. So let's do the first one. So um, basically, what we're going to do is um, we're going to work with first one. So let's fill this information in. Copy to the right. The third term, three, and that's going to be uh, three minus one. And now we can replace that with, we know the third term is 81. This whole thing gets replaced with 81. And then three subtract one is two. So that's all we have. We have 81 is equal to t1 uh, multiplied by r squared. We don't know r. We don't know the first term. Okay. So now we'll do the same thing again. This time we'll do it with the eighth term, one over uh, 729. Don't know the first term, don't know where, but we know n is, in this case, 8. All right, let's simplify this, substitute in the term itself. So we just know this term here now is a fraction. Uh, it's 1 over 729, replace it with the eighth term. And then obviously 1 subtract 8 is 7. So now we have two fractions, or sorry, two formulas, both um, in terms of T1 and R2. A couple ways you can approach this. Um, it's completely up to yourself. What I like to do is I like to set them both equal to T1 and then set them equal to one another. So substitution essentially. Um, Again, it's just a it's a two by two system, um, and we can just solve it that way. I think that's a good approach. Um, there's different ways to do it, but this I feel like this way is probably the uh, easier of the two, but um, or easier one of the easier methods I shouldn't say of the two or one of the methods. So I'm going to take this formula here and I'm going to rearrange it for t1. So when I do that, I divide by r squared um, here. So t1 is going to equal 81 divided by r squared. So I'm going to get a fraction here. Oh. All right, so we have 81 divided by r squared. R squared. That's going to equal t1. Okay. Because I just divide it by r squared on both sides. And I got t1 there. So now I can um, substitute that in to this, right? Because we have t1. This is in terms of t1. And then we have the r's. And that will be only in terms of 1. So basically I take this. The second one we found. 
and I'm going to take this, and everywhere I see T1, I'm going to substitute this in for T1. So literally this, I'm going to rewrite this, and this is kind of what I like about the computer too. You can, you'll see me actually substituting it in. So I'm taking T1, which is equal to 81 over R squared. I'm literally just replacing it right there. Boom. Now, you remember from grade 10, we have laws of exponents. When we have the bases are the same, we're dividing these because this is R, this is like R7. I'll even put it up here just so we make sure we understand. That's the same as writing it in here, right? You're multiplying it, so it goes in the numerator. Um, and you can do it like this. Um, and if we have R to the power 7 divided by R squared, this is actually going to be uh, equal to R to the power of 5, right? So it's 81. And if we subtract the exponents, as you guys are aware, so it becomes R to the power of 5 because it's 7 subtract 2 is 5. That's a lot of exponents. When you're dividing and you have the same base, you subtract the exponent. And now we can divide by the 81 on both sides. And now we're going to divide by 81. When we divide by 81, it's going to be 7. 29 multiply by 81. So we divide this by 81, which means we're going to multiply this by 81. When we multiply 729 by 81, we get 5,009, sorry, 59,049. <coughs> Excuse me. And our last and final step is to take the fifth root of both sides. So now I'm going to rewrite this. We'll take the fifth root of both sides, so fill that in here, insert, and we take the fifth root. Oh, sorry about that. So I'm just going to do it from scratch. So take the fifth root. R to the power of 5, right? And if you take the fifth root of something to the power of 5, it's just itself, right? Whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other side. That's so important here, right? So this whole thing here needs to be taken to the fifth root as well. So fifth root. I'm going to rewrite that fraction for some reason. Uh, that no big deal, 1 over 59, 0, 4, 9. So the fifth root of that, or you can multiply um, by the, a fractional exponent to the 1 fifth, it's up to yourself, um, and the fifth root, and you do that on your calculator if you wish, and it ends up being very nice, it works out, and we get 1. Ninth equals uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that in the graphing calculator as well. Just to, I think that might be a function that um, you might not be sure of. So I'm going to bring my graphing calculator up here. For a minute. And show you how to take the fifth root to get that on your calculator. So the fifth root is going to look like, that's in some old work I got there. So second function plus 712, clears your memory as you guys are aware. Showed you that many of times. And now to get the fifth root of that, we would just go second function. Oh, no, sorry, math. Just go math. And you go to the fifth option down, it's x root. Click on that, you put your 5 in. Then you're going to put your fraction, so bracket 1, divide it by Four nine, or sorry, five nine zero four nine. Close your bracket, enter, and you get decimal one, which we know decimal one repeated, which we know is one ninth. All right, or you could have just did the fifth root of that, and it would have gave you nine, and just want to complete it up to yourself. All right, um, uh, so there's your R value, um, and um, in the next video we'll continue on this. We only have only have fifteen seconds because they're fifteen minute videos. And in the next part, I will finish off this example um, by putting one ninth in and solving for t. And um, thank you. And we'll see you again in the next video.